Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Finally Functional. If you're new here, I'm making motorized shoes, these things, that you wear when you play a VR game. A couple of months ago, I did some testing and it was just manual testing and I ran into some challenges, but it was good enough to keep going and I have kept going. And now I'm ready to show off some more testing. And I'm just gonna hop into the testing because that's why you guys are here and during the testing, I'll explain some of the challenges that I'm still facing and how I plan on fixing them. So, let's get started! So one of the first things you may have noticed is one of the straps is loose on the binding. It's very uncomfortable if I put that strap on, so I leave it out. It's still fine the way it is, but I'm gonna redo the binding and the straps later. I had to redo a couple scenes because I realized you guys can't see up here, so I moved the camera up. Now, one of the other problems you may have noticed, or may have not because you couldn't really see it, is that this chain starts pulling on me if I walk a bit too fast. So if I go too fast, so I went a little bit fast there, then the chain starts pulling on me, the shoes don't react fast enough, and that's because the parameters I have for the motor speed now, the tuning parameters for the motor speed, they only handle the speed that I was walking at before. If I go a bit too fast, then the shoes don't compensate as fast as I need them to. I need different sets of tuning parameters depending on the speed that the motors, um, that the shoes are going at and I will add that in later. That being said, the shoes are more than capable of going faster, it's just the controlling algorithm I have now seems to not wanna go any faster than that. If I manually control the shoes, I'll show you I can walk a lot faster. So as you can see, when I manually control the shoes, I can go faster. So it's just, I need to have better control over the shoes. The shoes are completely capable of going much faster and I'm actually very happy about that. I was worried that the shoes just wouldn't be capable. To also help with the problem where the chain starts pulling on me, I want to put an IMU in, uh, attach it to this chain here or this tether here, whatever it's gonna be so that the IMU will detect, because it has an accelerometer in it that detects acceleration due to gravity, it'll detect that this chain is at an angle like this, and it'll know that I'm off to the side, I'm not in the center where I'm supposed to be, and that, um, that sensor can tell the shoes, you need to go a little faster so that you can pull the user back 
so that this chain is perfectly vertical. This will also help with another problem where when the shoes are activated and I just want to turn like this, it's kind of uh, throws me off balance. If I try to go like this, the shoes want to react and they want to move. But if, if I'm just trying to turn like this and I'm right in the center, I don't want the shoes to do anything. That's why in my testing, I'm not actually lifting my feet because when my feet are on the ground, are on the shoes like this, the shoes won't do anything. So I've just been turning like this instead of lifting my feet. But the IMU in the tether will help with that because it'll tell the shoes to not do anything if the uh, tether, the chain in this case, is perfectly vertical. Another thing you may have noticed is that I'm not doing any strafing. I have purposely disabled strafing because when I add it in, it causes the shoes to behave erratically. The shoes will go like this as they try to compensate for both my sideways motion and my forward and back motion. I have plans on fixing that in the future. But I can still do some manual movement to the side. I can still manually make the shoes go side to side. So again, it's a control problem. Another problem with the side to side motion is if I have my leg like this where it's off to the side and then I activate the side to side motion on that shoe, it skids along the ground. Those wheels on that side are not being pressed into the ground as opposed to if I'm like this, then they are. So I'm still having some skidding problems and I'm going to talk about my solution for that in a little bit. So I did not expect the shoes to be super perfect now, but I think compared to a couple months ago, they are a lot better. I can walk forward and backward at a normal walking pace pretty easily. To fix the skidding problem, I think I need to move this row of wheels responsible for the sideways motion closer this way over this way because the shoe is right here. My shoe is right here, but the row of sideways wheels is right here. If I move them closer to where the shoe actually is, to where all the weight actually is, there will be less skidding when the weight is shifted over this way. I don't know if you can hear this well in the video, but the shoes are not that quiet, but they're also not that loud. When I use these in a game, I am just going to use headphones, but I do have some ideas to minimize the noise mainly replace a lot of the gears that are in this contraption with belts because belts are a bit quieter and just we'll see what we can do from there. In addition to testing the shoes to see if they work, I wanted to see how big the batteries, motors, and speed controls need to be. So I did some additional testing to find that out. I measured the current battery voltage for the two shoes and then just walked around for 10 minutes. During this time, the voltage only dropped 0.02 volts, so the battery should only drop about 1.2 volts per hour. Since my batteries can charge to about 12.5 volts, and I don't want to discharge the batteries any lower than 9.3 volts, I calculated that I could get a bit over 3 hours of use out of these shoes on one charge. The battery isn't drained too fast, partially because with each step you take, the battery recharges a little. When your foot is in the air, you're pushing the shoe along the ground, which is turning the wheels, which is turning the motor, and that turns the motor into a generator, recharging the battery. I also measured that during the 10 minutes of walking, the maximum current draw reached was 41.75 amps, with an average current draw being 20.79 amps. Keep in mind, I was constantly walking at the pace I've shown throughout this video. If I were to walk faster or even jog, the battery would drain more quickly and the current draw would be higher. I also weigh 160 pounds, so if you weigh more than that, it'll drain the battery faster and the current draw will be higher as well. So these shoes aren't perfect yet, but they're good enough to use in a game, just to walk around a little bit. And so I'm going to move forward and I'm going to make an open VR driver so that I can just walk around a little bit in a game. 
Then I'm going to circle back and I'm going to keep iterating, iterating, and iterating to address the challenges that these shoes still face and make them better and better over time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm uploading less frequently because I want each video to have lots of interesting content in it. YouTube doesn't know if this video is good unless you interact with it. So if you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.